Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So we're here today because it is a new month even though we're almost ooh, like 10 days into it. Uh, we're a little behind in the, uh, in the household. Anyways I'm here to talk about the books that I read in February. February is typically a really slow reading month for me. I don't know why but historically I haven't read a ton and somehow it changed this year. I read nine books craziness in February. Um, a lot either audio or on my Kindle. I was really on my Kindle quite a bit, um, but I've been reading on my Kindle pretty regularly before I fall asleep at night and I feel like that's been helping me kind of get through a little bit more. So the first one I want to talk about is Forget Me Not. This is by Julie Soto. This was one I had on my Kindle. I got this through NetGalley a while ago. I kind of, it's been out for a bit. <laughs> um, but I was in the mood for some sort of spicy romance story and this one definitely delivered. So we have a lot of wedding vibes on here. We have a wedding consultant, maybe, wedding planner. Um, and her like go-to florist is, uh, they, they have a past <laughs> and it is spicy. It is spicy. I did give it about three and a half stars. It was a fine read, nothing like monumental, nothing that was pulling me really into it to continue. It took me a while to read that one. So it was just fine. Uh, then I read Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. This was for a uh, book club book. Uh, this I also gave three and a half stars. It focuses on a school shooting, but it does take a really unique spin to it. It is a school that is held hostage basically by terrorists. There is a shooting involved, so make sure you're aware of that. Um, the interesting take that Rosamond did with this is kind of follow the Shakespeare play Macbeth. Um, it was a play that they the school was putting on, and so they knew the story, and yet the events were kind of kind of correlating a little bit. It was it was very different, but it was fine. <laughs> Nothing like earth shattering. Uh, then we got to an audiobook that I devoured. Devoured. It is The Women by Kristen Hanna, which I, if you haven't heard about this already, I, I am happy I'm the one to tell you to go out and read it immediately. But this is her newest uh, book that just came out. I listened to this one. Uh, Julia Whelan narrates it. So hello. It's beautiful. Uh, five plus stars all around. Um, we follow Frankie, who is a nurse during Vietnam. She is felt like she feels like a sense of duty to go and serve. Um, a number of people in her family have always served in the military, including her brother. Um, and so she feels called to this and she does everything she possibly can to get over there and be a nurse. And then she's there and it is real and raw and heartbreaking yet. Oh, it's just so amazing. And the story doesn't stop. She then comes home and we have a whole half of a book left um, because it, soldiers returning from Vietnam were not necessarily welcomed or um celebrated and women returning from Vietnam it was even worse so there I think I wrote in my review there are more layers to this book than a wedding cake and it is just as delicious so it is amazing and I loved it every single moment of it I need to read it again I'm gonna apologize for the craziness in the background we have all the kids home today and the animals are like super spunky or something I don't know I don't know what's going on all right, so then I read 20 Years Later by Charlie Dun Dunlea, I think. I don't know. Um, this one was also a one that I read on my Kindle. See, there's lots of Kindle books. Um, I actually saw this a number of times through social media. It kind of kept popping up, and it's an older book, so I don't know what led to its kind of re-emergence into the bookish sphere. sphere. Anyways, I gave it four stars. This one is a mystery upon mystery upon mystery that centers and has a tie to 9-11. So we have our main character who is the host of, I guess, kind of like America's Most Wanted. I, they call it something different, but that type of a show. And she is 
no, she's notified of uh, an incident happening in happening in New York. It is 20 years after 9-11 and they have just now identified a very small piece of DNA and who it belonged to within the Twin Towers. Um, and she looks and she wants to do a feature on this technology and how they're now going to be able to give families some sort of closure. When she starts looking into it, she realizes that the person who it's tied to has a very mysterious past. And there's mystery upon mystery upon mystery. Again, it was fantastic. It had me hooked the entire time. I could not stop reading that book. Four stars. I loved it and devoured it. I have a really good like run here. So hold on, right? Then we have The Frozen River by Errol Wahan. This I would give a thousand stars to. This has found a place on my favorite books of all time. This is most likely, I will say it now, going to be a favorite book of the year. I don't know how something is going to be better than this. Chris, uh, the women closely behind. This one follows, um, takes place the late 1700s in Maine. And we follow Martha Ballard. She is a midwife. She has children. She's lived in this community for quite a long time. Very well respected. Um, she is brought in to basically determine a cause of death for someone who was found in this frozen river. Um, and her assessment of what happened is very different from what the town doctor's assessment is of what happened. Um, we follow her life and her, her, the, the, how do I say that? The troubles that she faces or the uphill battle she faces being a woman, being a midwife, going up against this man who is a doctor and, apparently knows more. Um, so the politics involved. This takes place over a few months, over like a winter, but we do get looks into the past of what happened to Martha. The romance between Martha and her husband is so fantastic, so amazing. Their relationship is amazing. They definitely face some hardships and some moral questions. Um, but the way this is written is unbelievable. I'm not a big tab. I don't have a lot of books. So this should tell you how great it is. I even have tabs in the author's note. Ariel Lahan is the queen of author's notes. Um, it just makes the book even better. I cannot hype this enough. Go read this. Just do it. Done. End of story. <laughs> All right, then I needed to lighten things up. I had a couple of pretty heavy, heavy books in a row. So I got an advanced reader copy of Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, which I was going to save for later on, but I just, I just couldn't resist it. And this is Five Glowing Stars as well. Could not stop reading this one either. Abby always gets me, it, it is guaranteed when I pick up one of her books, there's going to be humor, there's going to be romance. She is going to put these characters in the most unique situations. Like in this one, Emma and her roommate decide to live on an island in the middle of a lake in Minnesota. Like, who does that <laughs> for the summer? Um, it just makes my heart so happy to read this book. Emma and Justin are so made for each other, and it's so fantastic. And the decisions and heartache and love that is given to you in this book is just chef's kiss, five stars. Pick that up when it comes up. Um, then, well, then we like kicked it up a notch again. We picked up The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This was a solid four and a half stars for me. Uh, when I want something suspenseful, he is who I go to because it is heart pumping. It is potentially nightmarish. There are definitely, there's scenes in here that I had, I dreamt about. I don't want to tell you what they are, but, um, it was creepy, 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 creepy roller coaster ride. The main premise is around a woman. Her name's Emma. Oh yeah, I had two Emmas in a row. I remember that. She posted a negative book review online and she's living in a very remote location. Um, and she begins to wonder if the author is a little, well, sensitive or super, super dangerous in this post pulse pounding psychological suspense terror. Um, we follow what happens to poor Emma. It's craziness. And I loved it. 
So then I went again in another direction. I picked it up, The Lioness by Chris Bojalin. Um, I've been wanting to pick this up for so long because the premise of this sounds fantastic. We basically are in the 1960s in Tanzania, in Africa. We have a starlet, Katie Barstow. She is this actress at the top of her game at the moment. She decides to take a bunch of people on an African safari to kind of get away. And during that African safari, she's, the whole group is kidnapped. Now, if we would have just focused on that story, I have a feeling I would have given this more than two stars. <laughs> but we kept going back into the past. We had so many characters, way too many characters. And the connections were confusing. I didn't understand why they were all part of it. So we followed two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 different people. And each of them got their own chapter and then you got the history of each of them. And that it just is, it was not, it was boring. I didn't understand how they connected or why, how that helped the story. If we would have just focused on the safari and that part when we were back to that, I couldn't stop reading that, but it was, it was less than half the book. So I struggled with it. This is not great. I'll be honest. Then I listened to The Women in Me by Britney Spears. This is for my March book club that's happening this coming week. I have a hard time reading memoirs because this is someone's depiction on their life. And who am I to tell you that your memories are five stars or three stars or four stars or whatever. I just have a hard time with that. I truly enjoy memoirs. I get sucked into them. They tend to captivate me and the curiosity around how your life kind of, how it happened, how it rolled out. I've read a lot of memoirs. I wish I would have never read this one. It was three stars. Thankfully, Brittany did not narrate it. Now, I'm definitely of the age of Brittany was part of my growing up. Would I call myself a huge fan? Not really. So, but I was interested in her life and the conservatorship and how it got there. And I remember what I was told from the media and it kind of like, okay, well, tell me your story, side of the story. And I just found myself rolling my eyes at times. I. I tend to, usually I have empathy for someone going through hard times. I just, I didn't, I couldn't find the empathy or, or it didn't connect enough with me. So hard to rate this. So it just wasn't for me. I'm interested to see what the rest of book club thought about it. Um, Cause it's, you know, we had the same experiences growing up. We'll see what they, what they all say to it. But I don't know if, it's hard for me to even suggest if you're a Britney fan, absolutely go for it. If you're curious, go for it. Maybe I wasn't in the right headspace. Maybe, I don't know. There's a number of different factors that could have led to me not enjoying it as much as probably other people did. In my opinion, you can skip this book if you're looking for that. So those are the nine books I read in February. Currently, I am just getting started into My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. I've read, I've also read a couple of middle, middle grades for middle grade March. So I'm excited to talk about them. One is sitting right over there. It was really good. Um, otherwise, that's kind of all I really have planned for March. You know me, I'm more of a mood reader than anything. So we'll see what else comes up. Uh, if you've read any of these or want to share your thoughts, of course, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, what was the book that you really enjoyed in February? I think that's it. So like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.